good evening, really Baptists, and to our online audience. Amen. It's so glad that you have tuned in once again for LBC Bible Study. Amen. We thank you once again. What we would like for you to do uh, throughout this uh, Bible study time is to like, share, and comment. We want to just say thank you for tuning in to our Facebook uh, channel and subscribing to our YouTube. We just appreciate you so much. Our theme for the year, be strong in the Lord. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 10 tells us, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. Let us pray. Most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, it is once again that we pause to give thanks and praises unto you. We love you, Lord, and we just appreciate all of your blessings. For the opportunity of streaming live to um, for this virtual Bible study. We pray, oh God, um, for our pastor and for the production team. We pray, oh God, for those that have tuned in tonight. Bless us as only you can. We pray, God, that when all is done, that it will bless, that everything will bless your name. Father, and that you will receive the glory. It is in the matchless and the powerful name of Jesus, the Christ, we do ask and give thanks. Amen. Tonight, we would like to lift up some names uh, on our prayer list. And then uh, we also have some thinking of you names that are combined with our prayer list. And at the end of these services, Pastor Brooks will offer prayer. Amen. Sister Doris Wallace, Beverly Howard, Eric Burr, Ronald Burr, Minister Joanne Howard, the Grant family, Beck Wilson and Yeldell family, Brother Albert Yeldell, Dill, Payne, and Phillips family, Alexander Williams and Pollard family, Sister Vincia Taylor and family, Borkins, Gray, and Hardison family, Bird, Simmons, Rogers, specifically Jasmine uh, Rogers and Sister Alma Simmons, Hattie Laney, uh, Brother Simmons' sister, Deborah Creighton, Sister Dot Jones, Sister Collins, Danny and Sandra Parker, Deborah Johnson and family, Corey Johnson and family, the Stanley and Long family, Brother Theo Hughes and family, Sister Josephine Lyles, Jean Pruitt, Shakita Bates, Val, Hannah, Brianna, and Vicki. Mrs. Pinky Tucker, uh, Sarah Harris, Erica Breyer and her son, Kyle, Jessica Washington, Byron Henderson, Reverend Cedric Brown and family, the Reverend Foster, Robert Foster and family, the Carbon family, the Holcombe family, and all of the members of Lily Baptist and our online audience. We continually lift up all of our youth that has returned back to school for their safety. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Continue to be strong in the Lord.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our LBC Bible study again on this Wednesday night. Thank you so very much. I'm going to ask you to come in tonight as we begin to teach, and it's something that really uh, strikes your spirit. Uh, comment and then uh, tell us uh, where we are and who's out there. And uh, we're just excited about studying the Word of God. Amen. Now, we shall continue on the topic, Paul's letter to Philemon. Philemon. There's only one chapter in the letter. This is a one-page letter. And uh, I have uh, begun the uh, teaching last week to tell you a little bit about uh, Philemon. I'm going to rehearse some of that and uh, talk about uh, uh, the rest of the this little powerful letter of Philemon. So much can be learned from the book of Philemon. Now I have tagged for a topic this teaching tonight for love's sake, for love's sake. And, of course, I'm going to be looking at Philemon verses 9 through 25. As I said, there's only one chapter, Philemon 9 through 25. And I'll be, as Alma tell me sometimes, chase a few rabbits. I won't chase too many, Alma, but uh, we'll be talking about the book. It's a very important letter because this letter was used uh, during the time of the resistance, uh, the resistance to slavery in America, as a matter of fact, all over the world, in Britain, but uh, in the 19th century, man, the abolitionists used this book uh, that Paul wrote, uh, this letter that Paul wrote to Philemon. Let us look at a little background. Philemon is a wealthy man, but he is also a Christian. He lives in a large house, and the church, uh, the believers, are uh, meeting in his house. In the first century, we didn't have church buildings. Matter of fact, uh, they knew didn't know anything about having church buildings with steeples and, and uh, great buildings and great congregations. They didn't have that. For they met in individuals' houses. And the church, uh, this assembly in Colossae, which is in modern-day Turkey, or Asia Minor, in ancient times, met in Philemon's house. Amen. And so Paul writes a letter to him. This is a prison epistle. He is in prison, probably under house arrest, and he writes this letter. And he writes this letter uh, uh, requesting that Philemon receive his runaway slave. Runaway slave, we told you last week, is Onesimus, who had run away from the wealthy man by Lima. And I must stop here and digress to tell you that uh, in Roman uh, slavery was different than colonial slavery, the type that uh, went on in the New World and also uh, in the Old World, but it continued on. Uh, in the old world, and the residual effect is still going on today in America from colonial slavery. Slaves in the time of the writing of Paul's letter were, great many of them were professionals. Many of them were doctors and engineers and builders. Amen. About a third of the population of Rome uh, were slaves. They were slaves. And they were an intricate part in the society of uh, Rome, in Roman society. Now, sometimes a slave 
would voluntarily give himself up to a person because a debt was owed. He didn't have the money to pay it back. And he'd say, well, I'll uh, submit myself to servitude to you for a year to pay back my debt. And then, of course, the, uh, uh, the person, the rich man, would say, well, yes, yeah, a pretty good idea. Or you can help me grow my crops, or you can help me do my business uh, during that year. And in lieu of you paying me back what you owe me, uh, this will satisfy my debt. So let's see that Onesimus, let's not think of him as an uneducated, uh, uh, un, un, had no trade or anything. We don't know what he might have had. But I want to tell you, it may have been he was the one who uh, wrote the letters for Paul. Because to write letters, like today, we get our ballpoint pen and we go to uh, uh, wherever and get some stationery and we can easily write what we want to say. Well, back in those days, and in my former teaching, I told you they used a different type of material as writing material. Sometimes it was leather, but most of the time it was papyrus, which uh, was not substantial for, it was made from a plant that grew in the marshes and it was dried and laid out. And they used charcoal and oil and some other things to write on them. And it was an arduous task. It was a tough task. And it, so usually when you had to write a letter, you had someone to do it for you. So let me throw this out. Onesimo may have been the scribe that wrote the letter that we're studying. Amen. He says, for love's sake, in verse number nine, and that's my topic tonight, for love's sake, what is your motivation for action? What is your motivation to doing what Christ would have us do. For being a Christian, what is your motivation to your brothers and sisters? He said, I beg you for love's sake. And this love, remember I told you there were several words in the Greek uh, for love and the one that he used mostly for the church and in Christian circles is agape. That's a giving type of love. In other words, I care about what you need and want above mine. Are you with me? The love that we have now is all this, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, it won't fit in my teaching tonight. <laughs> but I'm talking about the love he's talking about here is I care about your situation above mine. Are you? He said, I beg you, as Paul the agent, now in my study, Paul is probably about 60 years old at this time of this writing. And so, but a 60-year-old man is, a, is an old man in the time, in the first century, which is in the 50s, I believe. Uh, and a person 60 years old was an old man. I remember when I was a child, when I saw somebody who was 60 years old, they were old. I mean, really old, 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 <laughs> oh. but that's not the case anymore. We have uh, all types of situations. We had some that lived past that, but um, I'm just trying to prove the text tonight. In, in this time, a 60-year-old person was an elderly person. They had any little thing would befall them to death, amen. He said, my, my motivation is for love's sake. My motivation is my love for you as a Christian, as my brother. My motivation is love. I'm doing this for love. I ought to do it for love. Amen. And he said, I beseech thee for my son, Onesimus, whom I have begotten, in my bonds. In other words, he is in house arrest in jail. This is not the dungeon arrest of uh, Second uh, Timothy, but it is, by any stretch of imagination, 
He is incarcerated in Rome, and this time he can uh, accept visitors, and so uh, Onesimus had uh, run away from Philemon and had made himself uh, uh, a citizen, not a citizen, but uh, a resident of Rome. Let me say my words right. And when he had run away and had come to Rome, this large metropolis city where he could uh, be lost in the many slaves and such that resided in Rome. Are you with me? Amen. But he came to Rome in some kind of way, he met Paul, and he uh, accepted Jesus Christ. He, Paul led him uh, to Christ. Paul led him to Christ, mm -hmm. which in time past was unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. It amazes me how a lot of times in studying Scripture, and I've been studying a long time, you can find some of the shortest passages have some of the deepest meaning in all of Scripture. He said, in time past, before, before he met the Lord, he was unprofitable, but now he's profitable. Amen. Wasn't worth anything. Or profitable, he said, not worth anything. But now he's worth something. Why? Because Paul had led him to Christ. And he, let me give you a little sidebar here. They, uh, uh, many slaves, they didn't even give a name. They would say, come here, unprofitable. You lazy dog, you. You know, something like that. That was just the way they did in, uh, in this time. And so oh, uh, Onesimus may have meant unprofitable. In other words, you lazy thing. You are a person who I have a hard time dealing with. Amen. But now, since he met the Lord, amen, somebody. Yeah. Y'all, the post and say, since I met the Lord, I have become profitable. I'm worth something now. Yeah. Because I met the Lord. Amen. But Paul said, I'm going to send him back to you. Amen. He is my love. He is the one who has helped me. But the right thing to do is to send him back to his master. What he said, according to the laws and according to society and the way we do things, uh, the right thing to do is to send him back to you. Mm -hmm. But I'm writing this letter, and he is the one who's carrying the letter, mm -hmm. by the way. He's, Onesimus is, is probably the one that's carrying the letter. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, I'm sending him back to you. It's the right thing to do to send him back to you. Amen. And he said, I, 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 I whom I would have retained that in thy stead he might have ministered to me in the bonds of the gospel. And what he's saying here in so many words from other translations, Onesimus is a great assistance to me uh, here in prison. And like I said, you can read through this and I suggestively look at it and you can see he probably was the one who wrote the letter because it was an arduous task to write during this time. Amen. I know when I write like what I'm, uh, you know, my notes for the night, I use a little laptop. Well, it's so easy there. If I make a mistake, have to do what? Amen. They got what word check in there that tell me just I don't have to do anything. It just says you have made a mistake. <laughs> Can't you spell? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But in those times when you made a mistake, the whole letter was defiled, like in the law in the Jews. But it would be you would mess up the whole letter and you would have to do start all over again. So it took an expert scribe. That's why they had certain ones that were scribe. And scribe means to write. And it was a whole group of people that in especially in Judaism that did the writing, who wrote 
the letters who wrote the books that we stirred today. Amen. I would have retained him. I would have loved to have kept him. Amen. But the right thing to do is to let him go back. But without my mind, would I do nothing that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly that, to understand that. Uh, I, I want you to say, I want your consent to send him back and receive him. That's why the abolitionists use that. They say, now, since we, we all belong to the law, amen, we are brothers and sisters. And when I send him back, I want you to receive him as a brother. Amen. He's still going to be a slave now. He still has his obligation to society. Can I get a witness, somebody? Amen. But I want to send him back. Amen. But perhaps, perhaps, now look here. Here's what he's doing. He used to say crawfishing a little bit. <laughs> but uh, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou should receive him forever. Maybe what Paul is saying here, I know he, he ran off, but maybe he just said, I'm taking a vacation. <laughs> you see what Paul said? Can't you see that in there? He's saying, I, maybe he just uh, left for just a little while, but he all of this time, he meant to come back. Ooh. Amen. Not now as a servant, but above a servant. Now, he has shame, but a brother, his status has changed. Amen. Amen. He is now a brother, especially to me, but how much more to thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. What he's saying, amen, his status has changed. Amen. He is a brother now yeah. since he has accepted Christ. He is a brother in the Lord. Amen. He's a brother to me. And since we're a brother, he's a brother to you. Amen. 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 If you, if you, if you my friend, if you count me a partner, I want you to receive him. Amen. Now we say, now I know we over here in the 21st century, and this doesn't sound like much, but this is a great thing. I want you to receive him. Now, first of all, Paul is crafting this letter, and you can see how he's doing. Amen. Uh, he's crafting this letter, and you notice when he opens the letter, he also addresses it to uh, Philemon's wife. Now, in the first century, the wives are the ones who, uh, who takes care of the slave. In other words, the, uh, the master of the house is what? Gone on off to do the business. And, and the, the wife is the one who stays at home and keeps house. And, and, and how she keeps house is to direct her slave to do the work. Are you with me there? So Paul is writing to her also, and but he's also no officially Philemon is in charge. Oh man, amen. If you count me as a friend, if you are my friend, amen, I want you to receive him as me. And here, here's something here beautiful. In verse number 18. If thou hast wronged thee, if he hath wronged thee, or owe thee all, put that on my account. Lord have mercy. What are you saying if he owe you anything? If he stole some money, amen, write a bill and give it to me, because I'll pay it. Lord have mercy. Isn't that something? If he, if he stole something from you, if he did you wrong, just charge it to my account. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I, Paul, have written it uh, with my own hand. I will repay it. What is he saying? I wrote this boy 
and it is binding because I wrote it. I didn't dictate it. I wrote it. I will repay it. In other words, he said, I am obligated to pay back what Onesimus may have stolen. And I did not say to thee, how thou oweth unto me, even thine own. I wrote it with my own hand. Yeah, brother, in verse number 20. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. The Lord, refresh my bowels in the Lord. Amen. Now, in this time, the uh, uh, the uh, the the Jews in the Old Testament, they always talk about the heart, the heart. But as we go to the New Testament. They call it the bowels. So they essentially mean the same thing. The innermost part of your being is what? Your mind. Your mind. It's not your heart. Your heart is not uh, what's telling you what to do and figuring out things and doing that. It is your mind. Amen. Amen. That's, that, that, that's, it's not your heart. I know I was teaching a class. And it was a friend of mine was there, and he said, I don't really understand what you're talking about. Because the Bible was saying heart. I said, no, you have to take into consideration the custom of the time and the teaching of the time. For first of all, when this was written, it was written uh, to what? The people who lived at that time. So the only way you can understand it is deal with the custom of that time. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Having confidence in my in, in your obedience, I write unto you, knowing that thou will also do more than I say. Amen. I got down a little something here to kind of clear it up a little bit. I am confident of your obedience. His friend, uh, uh, Philemon, I am confident of who you are and what you're all about and that you're a Christian and that you adhere to Christian principles. And I know I, I'm asking you this and I'm asking you a very large request and I know you're going to obe uh, be in obedience, uh, fulfill my request because of who you are. Lord have mercy. But with all, in the last part of the last few verses, in verse number 22, he said what? Uh, but with all, prepare me a lot for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. And what he's saying there in better translation is, prepare me your guest room, for I am coming to visit you later. I'll be there. This is this is two old friends. It's you and my friend, and uh, and I'm going to I'm going to visit you uh, later. I'm going to visit you. So what I want you to do is to prepare uh, a guest room. Amen. 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 In ancient days, the uh, uh, the the householder, especially the wealthy householder, would always have a guest room. And these, because of the uh, uh, accommodations and the custom that they had in those days, it was required of them if a traveler came through <clears throat> that they would have accommodations. Are you with me? So in other words, he said, get my uh, a guest room ready. Mm -hmm. Amen. Many of us, amen, we uh, some folks I know have a guest room, and uh, it's already for them. Amen. 
But when I know somebody's coming, I have to do what? I have to do some extra cleaning, <laughs> make sure, uh, you know, what can I say here? <laughs> you got to make sure everything's in place. Make sure you got some clean sheets on the bed and, and make sure whatever I have to do, light bulbs are in or whatever. Amen. That's what he's saying. Because yeah. I'm coming. Amen. <laughs> Said, there salute be Epaphras, my fellow laborer in Christ Jesus. Then he talks about his entourage. Now, as Paul, a person couldn't uh, travel alone in these times. There were many robbers and wild animals. And so Paul did all this traveling. He had a, uh, an entourage. Amen. Marcus, Aristobulus, Demas, Lucas. <clears throat> Luke, it's a probably Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke. Are you with me? He's the writer of the Gospel of Luke. And we also know that his occupation is what? He, he's a doctor. And so in his entourage, you know, many times he got beat up, and thrown in prison, and the hardships he had to bear, in his entourage, he had a doctor. All right, can you get that? Yeah. All right, let's look at verse number... Uh, 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 well, I, I want to tell you that Marcus is also a significant name. Now, I don't have time to really get into it, but you know that Marcus, the Marcus he's talking about is a relative of Barnabas. And on his first missionary journey, they got his, uh, just a short distance to Cyprus, I believe, and Mark, what, jumped ship on them. He got scared, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Amen. And when they, when uh, Barnabas wanted to uh, go on a second missionary journey, now that's the first missionary journey, where Mark had, uh, John Mark, had jumped ship on them and, and went back home. And so when they wanted to go on the second missionary journey, uh, Paul and Barnabas had some contention. In other words, they had some falling out. How many of you know that Christians fall out sometimes? It's not right. But what I'm saying, this is just a fact of matter. They fell out. And so Barnabas took Mark and went on a missionary journey, and it is lost in history because we don't know what happened to them or, or anything. Well, we know that they were successful, but Paul chose another person, and this person's name was Silas, and he continued, went on in his second missionary journey. So we can see that this falling out with Paul had not lasted, because here we see Mark is what? Mark is is with Paul at this time. <clears throat> Are you with me? Amen. Mark <clears throat> and Paul have repaired their relationship. And so what's significant about this is that uh, Paul, I mean, Paul is speaking to Philemon, let us not uh, uh, tear up our relationship. Let us make sure that we maintain our relationship in the Lord as brothers and sisters. Amen. That's where we ought to be in the church. I want to throw that in. I have my time. I don't have a clock, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to sound like that. I'm in good shape. Amen. I, I want to tell you that a lot of times we can have some misunderstanding. And how many here know you have misunderstandings sometimes? Don't let that just tear up your relationship in the church. And what it does, it causes disunity in the church. Amen. Causes pain in the church. And sometimes pain in many of our churches. And what, what it does when we have that kind of stuff, it, it, it uh, 
won't allow our church to grow. Amen. Focus a man over whatever and 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 they even forgot what they were mad about. But here we see a major dissension between Paul and Barnabas and Mark that they have repaired, as we see in this letter. Later on, they have repaired this. And what have they done? They are working together for the Lord. Amen. 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 I hope you understand that tonight. Let us throw aside stuff that will stop us from being what we ought to be with the Lord. I put aside my stuff for the greater good of the people of God and the assembly of God and the church. I put aside my personal thing. Amen. I put aside my personal thing. I don't really agree with it, but I put it aside because of the greater good <clears throat> of the people of God. I hope you, please, my dears, I, I pray, God, that you under hear this. Mark and Paul put aside this. And then guess what? Mark ends up writing one of the Gospels because he is the one who receives the Gospel from Peter, the leader of the whole uh, disciple van. Amen. So you can see Amen. Praise God. He records uh, the oldest, as a matter of fact, out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, I believe my information is right that Mark is the oldest of the gospel. Amen. The rest of them were written after Mark wrote uh, the gospel. Amen. Grace of our Lord and Savior of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, be with your spirit. Amen. Amen. And grace, boy, that's another whole song. Now, grace is the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in my life. Lord, have mercy. That's a power. Well, amen. The grace of God. Tell you what grace does. It influences my heart of the deepest of my emotion. Yes. Like I said, the Greek, the Hebrew, I mean, the, the heart means the deepest of my emotion. Amen. And, amen. How about being the deepest of my emotion? But it goes further than that. It is reflected in my life. Mm. You can't shout all over the church and act like hell. <laughs> it ought to be reflected in your life. Amen. 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 God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. Now next week I'm going to start another series and we're going to uh, look at the book of uh, Hoshea or Hosea. Hosea, some people pronounce it, Hoshea. Uh, this is a very important book, and the theme of it is talking about unfaithfulness. The people of God were unfaithful. And uh, I can't help but remember the great preacher in Atlanta, Jasper Reach Williams, preached a sermon. Uh, I married a prostitute, something like that. We're going to see what he's talking about here because the man of God married a prostitute to teach a lesson to the people of God. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight. You have not accepted Jesus as your Savior. I pray that you come. Amen. Make a decision for God. Amen. That's what I want you to do. Amen. I want you to make a decision for the Lord. I have a prayer. And if you can recite this prayer, I believe that the Lord will honor his word and save you. Don't necessarily have to have any great feeling, but you have to have a great commitment. Amen. Yes, sir. 
in your life. Amen. Would you recite after me? <clears throat> Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. <clears throat> I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the grave. I now turn from my sins and invite Jesus to come into my heart and life. I receive Jesus as my personal Savior, and I will follow you as Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you read and received that prayer, I believe you're saved. What I want you to do is contact us and tell us, Pastor Brooks, I have read the prayer. And recite the prayer and believe in my heart that I'm saved. Then I want you to join a Bible-believing church. I know we're in an unusual time now, but I want you to uh, join a Bible-believing church. We're, you're welcome to be a Lily Baptist. Our arms open wide for you where you can sit under our teaching. And, uh, and uh, we're serious about being people of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I, I want to uh, uh, pray. Amen. Let us pray for all of our sick and uh, our shut in in our church. Mary has read the list and we know that we love all of you. A lot of it we haven't seen for a long time, but we're praying for you every day. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come. We pray, O oh God, for all of this long list we have that we're praying for. We need you, Lord. We're living in a time uncertainties are everywhere. But, O oh God, we need you. The one certainty we have in our life is the Almighty God who has kept us down through the years. And so we pray for you right now. We pray for healing and we pray for peace, O oh God, in our lives. Turmoils of this world, don't let it get us down. But help us, O oh Lord, to hold on to you the one who has kept us down through the years. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray in Jesus' name. Don't forget, tomorrow night at 5 p.m. is our International Sunday School lesson where Deacon Ron Bird is our superintendent of the Sunday School. Yeah. And we've been having just some grand times and what we do, though, we get into some deep teaching of the Scripture. Amen. We, can, we get out into some deep water. Amen. We want to get serious. We want to learn everything we can about uh, the teaching. And we deal with the International Sunday School Lesson. And let's not forget about Tuesday. Tuesday is our pearls from the fasting. We have some like five-minute talks on some very serious issues and teaching that we'd like to share with you. It's at 11 o'clock on our YouTube channel. So uh, let's not uh, forget that amen. Also, uh, our uh, virtual uh, Sunday school, I'm not Sunday school, but our virtual uh, Sunday worship. Let's not forget that. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to pray for one another and love one another as the Lord would have us as we see the day approaching. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, we love you and we thank you. Tune in again. My brothers and sisters, go in peace. May the Lord be with you.